Good Friday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. A Wenatchee man accused of attacking his wife in November was charged yesterday with stalking her after that incident. The last court challenge to former President Donald Trump's appearance on the Washington primary ballot has been swept aside. Mostly cloudy and warmer on our Saturday with rain and mild temperatures expected most of next week. All the details coming up in weather. Health authorities say tainted meat products that led to salmonella poisoning in Chelan and Douglas counties may have come from a charcuterie package sold through Costco. Two people in the Wenatchee Valley reported illness last month after consuming charcuterie meats. The Washington Department of Health now says it was likely from an antipasto package by Fratelli Beretta. If you've purchased a package like this, health officials say you should discard it or return it to the store. The brand is carried in Washington Costco stores. Altogether, five people in the state have reported salmonella, salmonella poisoning symptoms but there are likely more who have not disclosed an illness. Symptoms of salmonella infection include diarrhea, fever, abdominal pain, sometimes vomiting, beginning one to three days after exposure. A former teacher in the Brewster School District has pleaded guilty after his arrest three months ago in an online child abuse sting. 53-year-old Theodore Edward Dodge was arrested in October by Washington State Troopers as part of Operation Net Nanny, which lures suspects with false offers to sexually exploit an underage victim. Police say Dodge, a teacher at Brewster Elementary School since 2016, traveled to Cowlitz County to respond to one such offer. He pleaded guilty last week to one count of second-degree attempted child rape. Dodge has been jailed in Longview since his arrest. He faces sentencing at the end of February. A Wenatchee man accused of attacking his wife in November was charged yesterday with stalking her after that incident. Chelan County prosecutors filed one count of stalking and seven counts of violating a protective order against 49-year-old Robert Gerald Hansen, who remains jailed on half a million dollars bond. Hansen was first arrested November 13th and charged with second-degree assault for allegedly strangling his wife in their home. Sheriff's deputies say after he was released on bond and ordered not to approach his spouse, Hansen continued to loiter outside his wife's residence and monitor her movements. He faces a possible trial in February. Washington voters could have a chance to codify a parent's Bill of Rights in an upcoming election. The Secretary of State's office on Thursday validated a petition for Initiative 2081, which would allow parents to review public school course materials, opt their children out of comprehensive sex education, and other steps. Opponents say most of those requests can already be met by state law or school district policies. With the petition certified, the legislature could choose to adopt it as submitted or let voters decide when the general election takes place this November. When we come back, Washington voters could have a chance to codify a parent's Bill of Rights in an upcoming election. Congratulations are in order to 48 Wenatchee High School students headed to the state DECA Career Development Conference. And the last court challenge to former President Donald Trump's appearance on the Washington primary ballot has been swept aside. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why people here drive Honda. Dependable all-wheel drive with traction control with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, which will make it very happy. 
And since it's no fun to fill up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda is known for legendary fuel efficiency? Great deals are here now, and so is Mr. Frost. So see your Inland Northwest Honda dealer today. Honda can handle it. Congratulations are in order to 48 Wenatchee High School students headed to the state DECA Career Development Conference. The teens qualified last week in a regional DECA competition held in Yakima. Students compete in a variety of exams, role-playing, and case study activities in the categories of finance, marketing, hospitality, tourism, and business management, as well as administration to advance. The 48 qualifying students will attend the State Career Development Conference in Bellevue at the end of February. Almost three quarters of Washingtonians participated in at least one wildlife related activity in 2022 and they spent more than nine billion dollars doing it. That's the finding in a new national report from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. An estimated 4.4 million adult residents of the state engaged in wildlife activities that year. About 290,000 people hunted in the state in 2022 and 1.2 million people went fishing. The report said as those residents and millions more who simply went out to watch animals in the wild spent about $1.9 billion on travel and $7.2 billion on equipment to do so. The last court challenge to former President Donald Trump's appearance on the Washington primary ballot has been swept aside. A Thurston County judge yesterday dismissed a second lawsuit claiming Trump was ineligible to run for office under the 14th Amendment for his alleged part in the January 6th uprising. Secretary of State Steve Hobbs quickly issued a statement that the printing of ballots for the March 12th primary would move ahead with Trump as a Republican candidate. Others on that ballot are Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Chris Christie. The latter two have already dropped out of the presidential race. Coming up next, an award-winning local book of essays, poetry, and artwork highlights the Shrub Step region of North Central Washington. We'll tell you more in tonight's feature story. Quiet weather is expected tomorrow with rain and unseasonably warm temperatures next week. I'll have all the details coming up in your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. So, how's Evan? Well, he's all grown up now, but I worry about him. So many dangers in the world. COVID, the environment, the opioid epidemic. Yeah, I hear opioid misuse is on the rise. I don't even know how to start a conversation with him. This might help. Get the facts, rx.com. There's a whole section on how to talk about opioids with your family. Offer support, not judgment. Cool. Talk to your family about the dangers of opioids. Visit GetTheFactsRx.com. In Digital Media Arts Program, we learn about video production gear and editing by the combination of class projects and nonprofit work and employment. Over there. It makes things happen. Yeah. It's pretty magical. We work in the industry at the Wenatchee Road, NCW Life Channel, and the Town Toyota Center event. Every day we work with industry standard equipment for a hands-on learning experience. Earlier this month, the anthology Cascadia Field Guide won the 2023 award for excellence from the Pacific Northwest Booksellers Association. Poet and Wenatchee Valley College instructor Derek Sheffield is one of the book's three co-editors. In tonight's feature story, he told NCW Life News the book of essays, poetry, and artwork is broken down according to the bioregions that make up the Pacific Northwest, including the Shrub Step region of North Central Washington. We came upon this idea of um, uh, deciphering these uh, 13 different communities in, in our region and, um, and, and organizing the book that way by um, uh, choosing anywhere from eight to 12 beings who live in relationship with one another uh, in that in that community, so um, this gives you an idea of some of the prose that we, three of us together, wrote and and um, edited. So shrub step. Perhaps a light rain has just moved through morning skies. 
you close your eyes and take a deep breath, smelling the unique mix of wet rock, bunch grass, dust, lupin, desert parsley, and everywhere, the distinctive bites of sagebrush. In this wet light, you can almost feel the pores of stones opening. These moments are especially precious for their rarity. A step is a large area of unforested grassland, and Cascadia's shrub step receives less than 10 inches of rain during a typical year. But truly, this is a land of contrasts. A 100 degree day is followed by a cold night, and the next afternoon might gush with thunder showers. In summer, the wind blows hot and dusty, while winter's freezing gales swirl with snow. This near desert might appear lifeless and uniform, but as spring arrives, melting snow gives way to an incredible display of wildflowers. Lemon dabs of sagebrush buttercup, pale pinks of prairie star, purples and golds of lupin and balsam root, creamy white to rose of bitterroot, fire orange, globe mallow, and every shade in between, and flocks, wild onion, larkspur, and scarlet gilia. As he shares stories of the time before European settlement, Okanagan tribal member Len Marchand says that grasses were belly high to a horse back then. But in the last two centuries, the human impact has been massive. A combination of clearing for agriculture, grazing, overgrazing, human-caused wildfires, motorized recreation, invasive species, and road building for oil, gas, and wind exploration has left only about 40% of this special biome intact. The mostly treeless shrub step affords expansive views across rolling hills, flats, and basaltic canyons. Even so, you might hear the clear whistles and flute-like song before you see western meadowlark perched high on a bare and twisting trunk of big sagebrush, bill opening with each liquid note. Listen also for the rustle of grasses as pygmy short-horned lizard crawls in search of ants. And the night, in the night, if you're lucky, you might hear the shrill yips and cries of coyote shivering the air and remember something you may have almost forgotten about wildness. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you're the end of the week today on Friday was a good one. We did have lots of clouds out there, some snow to begin the day. And yeah, overnight and counting yesterday, about another three inches of snow in the Wenatchee Valley. Some low hanging clouds to our neighbors up north in Okanagan County. This is our Billy Goat Sky Fi Tower camera, and it shows you the town of Pateras right here. And back here in that fog is Brewster. So a little bit of fog along the Columbia River uh, today up in far north, north central Washington, but temperatures are on the rise and all of us enjoy that. But with those rising temperatures, we have that possibility of freezing rain. And I'm thinking especially for you folks in the Columbia Basin overnight tonight and tomorrow. And what it is, is it starts out as snow in the upper atmosphere. And as it crosses uh, some warm air, which we are seeing right now, a warm front move through this morning, and then it collides with that colder air that's at the surface, it turns into that freezing rain. And we could definitely see that throughout our area. Be very careful traveling over this upcoming weekend. So freezing rain a possibility, but we are warming up as we mentioned. 26 our high temperature today. We're getting closer to that normal, which is 34 for this time of year. Our record high, 49, and that was set in 1994. We started off the day at 19. That too, a little bit closer to where we should see our lows for this time of year. 24 is our normal low and our record cold, one below zero, set in 1962. Look at that, we picked up another 11 hundredths of an inch of precipitation 
and that now gets us to almost a half an inch for the year and three more inches of snow. So 21 inches of snow now going back to when our season starts and that goes back to October 1st of last year. Sunrise 741 this morning and it's set this afternoon at 443. Taking a look at what we can expect Saturday temperatures. The first time we've been in the 30s in weeks here in north central Washington. We should all see 30s tomorrow. 33s all over the board. Moses Lake, Afreda, Quincy, Wenatchee, up through Eniad and Chelan. All of us about that 33 degree mark. 31 in Leavenworth. The cool spot, Lake Wenatchee at 20, 29. And you folks too might see 30 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Tonight we are still seeing the effects of this trough and this low pressure bringing us some clouds tonight, but really won't affect us as far as rain showers or snow showers overnight tonight. We'll see lows in the mid 20s for Saturday's uh, weather, mostly cloudy skies. We will see warmer conditions. It should be a little quieter for our Saturday in most locations. We're warming up too, as we just talked about high temperatures in those low 30s, getting you into the end of the weekend on Sunday, cloudy skies, and this is where we could see some more of that freezing rain, a 40% chance of rain and snow showers. Temperatures just about right in those mid 30s. So keep an eye on that if you're traveling on Sunday and then more wet weather as we get you into Monday, a 60% chance of morning rain showers. And yeah, that's your commute Monday morning, but a little bit better by the afternoon. We'll see high temperatures on Monday in the upper 30s. So our temperatures still on the way up for Tuesday. We're not done with the wet weather yet. Here's storm number four as it moves into the area, a 60% chance of rain. It will continue to warm up as we get into early next week. High temperatures, look that, look at that, lower 40s. We haven't been 40 degrees in a long, long time. For Wednesday, yeah, back to the rain showers, a 70% chance of the wet stuff. That'll mainly be in the morning too. It will be mild, high temperatures again, right around 40 degrees. And by the end of our forecast on Thursday, cloudy skies, most of the showers I think will be in southwest Washington. Some of that could move up into our area. 40% chance of it. Highs again near 40. And I'll tell you folks, looking ahead to next weekend, we'll be flirting with temperatures near 50. So we'll talk more about that when we get together again on Monday. Seven day forecast, 25 degrees overnight tonight. Pretty quiet for Saturday at 33 degrees is gonna feel pretty nice for most of us. 30 the overnight low on Saturday. And then a very rainy period, Sunday right through Wednesday. But notice how we warm up a few degrees each day culminating in about 40 degrees on Tuesday, Wednesday as well about 40. And by the end of our forecast on Thursday, a mix of rain and snow. I think it'll be mainly rain throughout the period with high temperatures right around 40 degrees. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why people here drive Honda. Dependable all-wheel drive with traction control with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to fill up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda is known for legendary fuel efficiency? Great deals are here now, and so is Mr. Frost. So see your Inland Northwest Honda dealer today. Honda can handle it. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect. No matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. It was a good night for men's college basketball teams in Washington last night. First of all, Eastern Washington knocked off Weber State 80-78. to The score looks a little closer than the game was with Weber State hitting a three-pointer at the buzzer. Well, speaking of buzzer beaters, how about Washington's win at Cal last night? 
Moses Wood with the game winner as Washington knocks off Cal 77-75. Other action, Gonzaga returned to its winning ways with an 86-69 win over Pepperdine, while Washington State dominated Stanford 80-75. Now coming up tomorrow, the Cougars visit Cal at 2 on the Pac-12 network. Washington visits Stanford at 6, also on the Pac-12 network. Eastern visits Idaho State at 5 on ESPN+. Plus. Gonzaga plays at San Diego tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. Eastern Washington women defended the home court last night with a 56-38 win over Weber State. 17th ranked Gonzaga women beat Loyola Marymount 72-48. Washington State hosts Arizona State tonight at 7 while Washington takes on Arizona. The Gonzaga remains in the kennel tomorrow at 2 with St. Mary's in town. That's on ESPN+. Plus. Eastern Washington hosts Idaho State at 2 also on ESPN+. Plus. Then on Sunday, ASU visits Washington at noon. WSU hosts Arizona State also at 12. Well, the football season is winding down for fans who just can't get enough football. It's on to the divisional round of the NFL playoffs with two games Saturday and two more on Sunday. The first is an AFC matchup in Baltimore where the Ravens are hosting Houston tomorrow at 1 30 on ESPN and ABC. That's followed by an old NFC rivalry between the Green Bay Packers and San Francisco 49ers. That'll be at 5 15 on Fox. Sunday's game begins at noon with Detroit hosting Tampa Bay on NBC. That's followed by Kansas City at Buffalo at 3.30 on CBS. Well, the Seattle Kraken couldn't hold on to a 2-0 lead at Edmonton last night. Fell to the Oilers by a final of 4-2. Ely Tolvanen and Jared McCann found the back of the net in the first period to stake a 2-0 lead for Seattle, but Edmonton battled back for a record 12th consecutive win. You had four blocks against the Rangers on Tuesday. McDavid through the logo. He's in. To the outside of Wenberg, a pirouette. He lost the puck. York Strand, a breakaway. Kelly Tolman in. In a low. He scores! To the roof from Ellie Tolman in. 10 11 left to go in the opening period. The Kraken off and running. It went off McCann, and now Gord back out to center. He'll sing a pass for Eberly for McCann, and he scores! That's hockey, baby! Jared McCann with goals in back to back games. A beautiful play. Two on one, though. Yanmark. And now DeHarnay. Stopped by Decard. They scramble back. It's free. And it stays out. Double team. Tolvanen. And Alexiak. Right side hole. Swings it. Off the stick. And they score. It's Warren Fogel. Who was in the right place at the right time. Face off possessed by Edmonton Bouchard. To the wall, Nugent Hopkins. Evan Bouchard, replay catch. To the goal line, Tricycle in front. The court said no, and they score. On the rebound, it's Leon Tricycle. Burakovsky slides the pass. It's Wenberg. He'll shove it deep in the zone. Edmonton circles back defensively. Ekholm for Kane. Evander Kane skate the stick. And now a spring pass, Dreisaitl. Fogel scores! Warren Fogel on a beautiful play. Picked up by Evan Bouchard. The Oilers clear it all the way down to Joey DeCord. He moves it quickly. Wenberg on a change. He's in. His shot. Scores! Alex Wenberg! This is challenge. He's determined the play was offside. He's got one five five on the clock. McDavid now backpedaling deeper in the zone for Dreisaitl. McDavid across, they score! Zach Hyman set up by Connor McDavid. And the Oilers will extend their franchise record. It's now a 12-game winning streak. They will surround Stuart Skinner, who has won nine in a row. Tolvanen and coach Dave Haxtall say it was a great start last night, but not enough down the stretch. I think it's important to start start on time, and I think we did a really good job on that. But you know, we have to play the whole whole 60 minutes to you know win these games. So it's unfortunate that uh, you know 50 minutes wasn't enough today. Our first 20 was good. Um, you know, we uh, obviously the first 10 minutes of the second period is what uh, what cost us. Um, you know, we uh, <clears throat> we weren't as sharp as, as we needed to be, and gave obviously gave up too much in that uh, in that time. So we had push back after that. Um, but, uh, you know, we weren't able to capitalize on what was a good start. Seattle finishes the six-game road trip 3-3 three and three and returns home Sunday to host Toronto at 6 o'clock. You can watch that on Root Sports Northwest.
Comanche Wild will host a very popular annual event this weekend at the Town Toyota Center. It's the annual Guns and Hoses game where local fire and rescue first responders play hockey against local police and sheriffs. The doors open at 3, the Guns and Hoses games at 4. Wenatchee and Spokane will drop the puck at 6 o'clock. Girls bowling season ended in a three-way tie for the league title yesterday. Eastmont shut out Sunnyside while Wenatchee beat Davis and West Valley won to give the uh, three a share of the regular season title by virtue of a pin count tiebreaker. Eastmont will host the district tournament. That will be next Friday at Eastmont Lanes. Four boys basketball games were played despite weather last night across eastern Washington. The Efreda and Sela were postponed, but Quincy beat Chelan 68-53. Omak top Cashmere 70-63. Eniat edged Cascade Christian 35-31 and Soap Lake beat Pateras 79-69. The Viking and Tiger girls game also postponed last night due to weather. Chelan edged Quincy 40-32. Cashmere shut down Omak 52-10. Eniat controlled Cascade Christian 65-19. Pateras stopped Soap Lake 62-32. Well, we were supposed to broadcast Wenatchee and West Valley tonight, but that game has been postponed until the end of the month. Rest of the schedule has Bridgeport at Okanagan, Brewster hosts Liberty Bell, Oroville's at Tanaskan, Manson visits Lake Roosevelt, and Moses Lake Christian hosts Wilson Creek. All those games start at 6 o'clock. Waterville Mansfield plays at Pateras tonight at 7.30. Should mention Moses Lake and Davis also postponed for tonight. Shockers and Billy Goats boys teams play tonight at 6 o'clock. Wenatchee and West Valley along with Davis and Moses Lake also postponed. Lake Roosevelt hosts Manson at 7. The 7.30 games have Bridgeport at Okanagan. Brewster hosts Liberty Bell. Oroville's in Tanaskan and Wilson Creek visits Moses Lake Christian. Now coming up tomorrow in girls basketball, Efreda is scheduled at East Valley of Yakima at 3.30. We are supposed to have Eastmont and Davis at 4.30 here on the NCW Life Channel. A decision to be made probably tomorrow morning on that one, so stay tuned to our Facebook page for more on that. Rest of the girls schedule tomorrow has Wenatchee at Moses Lake at 4.30 while Okanagan visits Davenport. Lake Roosevelt hosts Lakeside at 5. Waterville Mansfield visits Soap Lake at 6 o'clock. Here's the boys schedule for Saturday. Starts at 5 with Efreda at East Valley. Cashmere hosts Sultan. Brewster plays at Liberty Spangle at 5.30. If the Eastmont and Davis boys play at 6, we'll have that live on the NCW Life Channel. Wenatchee plays at Moses Lake tomorrow at 6 while Cascade hosts Liberty Bell and Okanagan travels to Davenport. Lakeside plays at Lake Roosevelt at 6.30 while Soap Lake hosts Waterville Mansfield. That's a look at sports news. Have a great weekend and a happy Friday. As we leave you tonight on January 16th, NCW Life News reporter Jordan Gonzalez and producer Tucker Wagner toured Kenroy Elementary School with assistant principal Aaron Coyle to learn more about building conditions mentioned in the district's $117 million 2024 bond proposal. Kenroy was built as a series of separate buildings and every classroom has an exterior door that leads to the outside, which is how students move around the school. The bond specifically addresses the exterior doors, which are seen as a safety concern. Here's what happens while our cameras were rolling. Uh, this is Aaron. Hannah's door is right here. Yep, this is Aaron. Yes, we are having a fire drill right now. Okay. So. <laughs> okay, go out that door. Okay. I have to go handle the fire drill right now. Okay. Yeah. When we were outside and you were trying to unlock the door, yeah. what was the situation there? Could you, you just couldn't access it or is it just never the accessible? Door, no, no, the door is usually, I don't know, the, it froze. It was, I, I don't know, the doors for some reason wasn't opening. Uh -huh. um, so she had actuated a different way. Mm -hmm. But the kids were trying to get out that door for the fire drill. Oh yeah, for sure. That was NCW Life News will begin airing further coverage about the bond project beginning next week.
And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great weekend.